Okay, so let's look at homework number five from this week. And we're posed with a problem with this balanced equation to work out the mass of oxygen which was used and also the mass of water. So apologies for my rough handwriting as ever. But let's see how we break this problem down. We have the original balanced equation, 4 moles to 3 moles, producing 2 and 6 moles of nitrogen and water. And we're told that we have 204 grams of ammonia, NH3. Our equation is related in molar amounts. So we have to turn that mass into a mass in a molar amount. So for one mole of NH3, 14 grams for nitrogen, one gram for hydrogen. So one mole of NH3 is actually 17 grams. So if we have 204 grams, we divide by the mass of one mole, 17, and the number of moles of ammonia, NH3, is therefore 12 moles. Now the equation originally uses 4 moles. So if we now have 12 moles, 204 grams, we have 3 times as much. And if we have 3 times as much of the ammonia, we need 3 times as much of the oxygen gas. 3 moles, 3 times as much, is going to be 9 moles. From the chemical formula for 1 mole O2, 16 grams per mole of oxygen times 2 gives 32 grams per mole. So 9 moles of O2 would be 288 grams. And that's our answer for part 1. 288 grams of oxygen gas, which is 9 moles. 3 times more than the original equation, because 12 moles is 3 times more and four. So using these proportions for the amount of water which would be produced, if the original equation produces six moles, three times more would be 18 moles. From the formula, one mole of water, one times two for hydrogen, plus the 16 for oxygen, one mole is 18 grams. So 18 moles is 324 grams. Then, for the percentage yield of water, we take the actual recovery of water, 198, divided by the theoretical amount, which we just calculated was 324. So actual divided by the theoretical times 100, 198 divided by 324 times 100 comes to 61.1%. So we've recovered 61% of the water, 198 grams is 61% of the water. Let's look at question two. So question two, another balanced equation with molar quantities. And we have been given 28 grams of the acetylene, C2H4. From the chemical formula, 12 grams for carbon times 2, 1 gram for hydrogen times 4, so 1 mole is 28 grams. So compared to the original equation which uses 2 moles, 1 mole is half as much. So our scaling for this reaction is half or 50%. So if the original equation uses 6 moles, and we are using half as much, we only want the mass for 3 moles. From the formula O2, 1 mole is 32 grams, because of the mass of oxygen, 16 times 2, and 3 moles, 3 times as much, is 96 grams for our first answer. Working out the amount of carbon dioxide, again it's half the scaling, so if the original equation used 4 moles, we need to know the mass of just 2 moles. From the formula, 12 grams for carbon, 16 grams for oxygen times 2, 1 mole is 44 grams. So 
So twice as much as 88 grams. For the percentage of water, on this half scaling again, remember, so of four moles in the original equation, we should be working with two moles, which is 36 grams. So the actual recovered yield, 15 grams, divided by the theoretical mass, 36, times 100, gives us 41.6% recovery. And that's the answer to our third question in question two. So, answers for the last one, and just walk through this. We have two half equations. And the only thing we're going to change in the half equation is the addition of electrons to the appropriate side. Addition of electrons to make each side electrically equal to each other. Now this might not necessarily mean zero charge on each side. It just means parity or equal charge on each side. A plus two ion changing to a plus three ion of iron so to add the electrons to the appropriate side and balance, we can add an electron to the right, so plus three, minus one from that electron, and the right hand side is also a plus two charge, just like the left. As the electron appearing on the right, it means that this is a oxidation step. The electron was part of the ion to begin with, but if it loses the electron, Losing electrons is oxidation. Second one, the bromine, a bromide ion, and there's two of these bromide ions. So each bromide ion is individually negative one charged. Two of them produces a charge of negative two. The bromine produced by the end of the reaction has no charge. The chemical formula has no charge overall, so the whole thing must be zero. So to get the same charge on both sides, negative two on this side, the only thing we can do is add two electrons to the right, so both sides are now electrically negative two in charge. Electrons lost once more, so it's another oxidation half equation. So let's look at the last question, but let's focus in on this part, which is a bit more complex. So, we have the complete chemical equation, potassium combined with oxygen to produce potassium oxide. So, we have the complete chemical equation, potassium combined with oxygen to produce potassium oxide. But we have this telltale symbol in the corner that tells us it's AQ or aqueous. From our chapter 3, Ion Chemistry, on page, might be in page 66 to 69, we have the information that tells us that any compound, any ionic compound, which is aqueous in water, means that it's dissociated into individual ions. So every molecule of potassium oxide contains two potassium ions. In two molecules, we have four potassium ions, and each of them is positively charged. Group 1 metal, so a plus 1 charge is it loses the only electron in its outer shell. Oxygen, one oxygen ion in each molecule, two molecules, so two oxide ions. And again from the periodic table, oxygen gains two electrons to complete its shell. So when we look at potassium, it's more correct to look at potassium turning into potassium ions, and to balance the two sides with the appropriate number of electrons, we need to add four electrons to the right. 
Each potassium ion is plus one. Four of them gives us a plus four charge. So four electrons, four negatively charged electrons, cancels out to zero, just as each of these potassium atoms is electrically neutral. For the oxygen, going to oxide ions, so we write it out in its second half equation, four electrons added to the left gives us a negative four charge overall on the left, just as the negative two charge two times over makes the right hand side negative two. So as we look at the two steps, electrons lost by potassium, so this is oxidation, electrons gained, picked up by the oxygen to form oxide ions, the oxygen has been reduced. And that completes our redox question.